The Sheep Pig by Dick King Smith. Chapter 1 Guess My Weight. What's that noise? said Mrs. Hoggett, sticking her comfortable round red face out the kitchen window. Listen, there it is again. Did you hear it? What a racket. What a row. Anybody thinks somebody's been murdered? Oh, dearie, dimmy. Whatever is it? You listen to it, will you? Farmer Hoggett listened. From the usually quiet valley below the farm came a medley of sounds. The umpa ump of a brass band, the shouts of children, the rattle and thump of a skittle alley, and every now and then a very high, very loud and very angry sounding squealing, lasting perhaps ten seconds. Farmer Hoggett pulled out an old pocket watch as big as round as a saucer and looked at it. First starts at two, he said. It started. I know that, said Mrs. Hoggett, because I'm late now with all these air cakes and jams and pickles and preserves as is meant to be on the produce stall. It's very minute. And who's going to take them there? I'd like to know. Why, you are. But before he does, what's that noise? The squealing sounded again. That noise? Mrs. Hoggett nodded a great many times. Everything she did was done at great length, whether it was speaking or simply nodding her head. Farmer Hoggett, on the other hand, never wasted his energy on his words. Pig, he said. Mrs. Hoggett nodded a lot more. Oh, he thought it was pig. Oh, he said to myself, that's pig, that is. Only nobody round here do keep pigs. Tis all sheep for miles about. That's a pig doing, I said to myself. Anybody think he was killing the poor thing? Have a look when you take all this stuff down, which you better do now. Come and give us a hand. I can do it in the back of the Land Rover. Tisn't raining, won't hurt. Wipe your boots before he comes in. Yeah, said Farmer Hoggett. When he'd driven down to the village and made his delivery to the produce stall, Farmer Hoggett walked across the green, past the hoopla stall and the coconut shy and the Aunt Sally and the skittles and the band to the source of the squealing noise which came every now and again from a small pen of hurdles in a far corner against the churchyard wall. By the pen sat the vicar, notebook in hand, a cardboard box on the table in front of him. On the hurdles hung a notice. Guess my weight, ten pence a go. Inside was a little pig. As Farmer Hoggett watched, a man leaned over and picked it out of the pen. He hefted it in both hands, frowning and pursing his lips in a considering way, while all the time the piglet struggled madly and yelled blue murder. The moment it was put down, it quietened. Its eyes, bright, intelligent eyes, met the farmer's, and they regarded one another. One saw a tall, thin, brown-faced man with very long legs, and the other saw a small, fat, pinky-white animal with very short ones. Oh, come along, Mr. Hoggett, said the vicar. You never know. It could be yours for ten pence. Guess his weight correctly, and at the end of the day, you could be taking him home. Don't keep pigs, said Farmer Hoggett. He stretched out a long arm and scratched its back. Gently he picked it up and held it before his face. It stayed quite still and made no sound. That's funny, said the vicar. Every time so far that someone has picked him up, he screamed his head off. It seems to like you. You'll have to have a guess. Carefully, Farmer Hoggett put the piglet back in the pen. Carefully, he took a tenpence piece from his pocket and dropped it in the cardboard box. Carefully, he ran one finger down the list of guesses already in the vicar's notebook. Quite a variation, said the vicar. Anything from twenty pounds to forty so far. He wrote down Mr. Hoggett and waited, pencil poised. Once again, slowly, thoughtfully, the farmer picked the piglet up. Once again it remained still and silent. Thirty one pounds, said Farmer Hoggett. He put the little pig down again. And a quarter, he said. Thirty one pounds and a quarter. Thirty one and a quarter pounds. Yes, thank you, Mr. Hoggett. We shall be weighing the little chap at about half past four. It will be gone by then. Oh, well, we can always telephone you if you should be lucky enough to win him. We never win nothing. As he walked back across the green, the sound of the pigs yelling rang out as someone else had a go.
You never do win nothing, said Mrs. Hoggett at tea time, when her husband, in a very few words, explained matters. Though I've often thought I like a pig, we could feed none scraps. It'd come just right for Christmas time. Just think, two nice hams, two sides of bacon, pork chops, kidneys, liver, chitlin, chocolates, gives his blood for a black pudding. There's the phone. Farmer Hoggett picked it up. Oh, he said. 